Good morning to everyone. Good morning. I welcome all of you this morning as we join together to worship our Lord on this Memorial Day weekend. And we certainly want to remember those who went to war and laid down their lives so that we can continue to enjoy the freedoms uh, that we have as a nation, as a country. May we never ever forget what they have done uh, for us. May we always cherish those freedoms that we have. But at the same time, this coming Thursday is the ascension of our Lord Jesus. And He truly provided real freedom for all of us. As He set us free from our sins, from death and hell, and earned for us forgiveness, life, and salvation. And today we want to take a look at the ascension of our Lord Jesus because it's just as important as His birth and resurrection and see the significance that it plays in our lives. And with that, we'll begin our service this morning on page 26 in the front part of your hymnal. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. And with that, we'll continue now with the singing of hymn 175. sinfulness 
and ask Him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful, and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil, and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given His one and only Son to be the atoning, the substitutional sacrifice payment for our sins. And therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you for all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. For all that we need in life and for the wisdom to use all of your gifts with gratitude and joy, hear our prayer, O Lord. For the steadfast assurance that nothing can separate us from your love, and for the courage to stand firm against the assaults of Satan and every evil, hear our prayer, O Christ. For the well-being of your holy church and all the world, and for those who offer here their worship and praise, hear our prayer, O Lord. Hold us by your power and keep us in your tender care. The works of the Lord are great and glorious. His name is worthy of praise.
our Lord and Savior. And he prays that they would come to, to know Jesus better and better. And, uh, and this Jesus, who is our Lord and Savior, well, he, he rules over the heavens and the earth, all for the sake of his believers. And that includes all of you here today as we read. All right, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance the saints, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is like the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every title that can be given, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body. The fullness of him who fills everything in every way. Here ends our reading. Alleluia, alleluia, Christ has risen, he is risen indeed. Alleluia. Surely I will be with you always to the very end of the age. Alleluia.
believing and ever faithful to Him. Amen. The words for our meditation this morning are taken from Acts chapter 1, beginning with the first book. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day He was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles He had chosen. After his suffering, he showed himself to these men and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So, when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And after he had said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and he cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? The same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. So far, our text. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, does the name Bob Ross ring a bell for you? He used to be on public TV, and he had a show called The Joy of painting. And when I discovered it on a Saturday, I don't know, it was about 12, 12, 30, he would come on. And he was a painter. And he, within a half hour, painted these beautiful, beautiful landscapes. And I just went, oh. He made it look so easy. He did this, he did that, and he did, oh, we'll put a little this and that in, and whatever. And I go, wow, well, what a gift, what a talent. And sometimes <clears throat> he would do landscapes, and then he would show the reflection off the water. And if you would spin that picture around, you wouldn't be able to tell what the landscape, what was the, uh, the reflection off the water. Well, in the same way as you picture Jesus, glorified, wrapped in a cloud, and believer's eyes looking up, do we just assume that he is ascending? Like that picture, you spin it around, which is the landscape, which is the reflection. Is Jesus coming, or is he going? Well, we're going to see today that though hearts tremble at Jesus going, faith sees him here coming every day. With power. Now, when it comes to life, there are certain people that you come to trust and feel comfortable with, right? Maybe it's your doctor or your dentist. Or maybe it's an automobile mechanic. Or maybe it's a, a lawyer or a contractor. 
yet when they retire. Or maybe they move on someplace else. How does that make you feel? You feel lost? Do you feel like, oh man, I'm, we're never going to find anybody to replace a person like that? Well, when it comes to our salvation, it may seem as if, in our text today, that Christ has, has left us. And that we are left on our own to fend for ourselves. I mean, think about it. If you had lived at that time of Jesus, and you had become a believer in him, just look at what he did here on this earth. All the miracles that he performed. Healing people of their diseases, even raising people from the dead. How he fed people with just a little food and feeding a whole lot of people. Or having control over the weather. Well, the reason Jesus left is he had a plan. And that plan was that now, when it comes to his church, it would proclaim the good news of salvation. The good news of repentance, forgiveness, and salvation, starting with the apostles, as he says here to them. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Okay. Most of these guys were nothing more than fishermen. How would you feel about them taking over and sharing the gospel? Would you feel that, uh, that this gospel preaching may not be enough to save lost souls? And so you look up and you say, Jesus, will you please come back? How do you feel about getting a doctor, a new doctor, who's just graduated, just starting out? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. But the truth of the matter is that Jesus was not leaving to retire. No. He would continue to carry out his work. He would advance his kingdom's work. It would not, his leaving would not be a loss. You see, Jesus would send the Spirit upon his disciples, his apostles. And again, an apostle is one who is chosen by Jesus, trained by Jesus, sent out by Jesus. And he would give them the knowledge, the wisdom, and a clear understanding of Christ's teachings, along with the truth, the truth of power and ability to go forth to the ends of the earth and to proclaim the message of salvation with boldness and confidence. And the bottom line is by their work, the Spirit and Christ worked through them, and the result through their work is that the Holy Spirit would bring many, many people to faith in Him, just like He's done with you. In fact, the, the church that lives by the Word and the Spirit will endure and prosper until He returns. Now, what was the whole purpose of his ascension? Well, number one, again, like his resurrection, to give proof and evidence that he was Christ, the Messiah, the promised one. Two, that he had fulfilled everything that was said about him in the Old Testament. And that his father had accepted everything that he had done for us. 
And then by going to him, he would also plead for us. He would intercede. So as we confessed our sins today, he reminds his father, Father, I paid for all their sins. And the father says, yep. And he forgives us. And he remembers our sins no more. And by being in him, he's able to reach out and to bless and take care of each and every one of you here today. And not just you, but everyone in this world. And by his ascension, it gives proof and evidence that just as he ascended, that we too will ascend. Of course, when we die, our soul goes to heaven. But on Judgment Day, our bodies will be raised up, reunited with our souls, and we will ascend into heaven and be with Jesus forever and ever. And so that's the significance of his ascension. But in the meantime, he has not left us alone. He comes wherever two or three are gathered, and even one. When you sit down to read his word and study it, he's there for you as well. And in the meantime, of course, the apostles are no longer around to do that preaching and teaching. And so he calls servants, pastors who are trained and educated in the Word, and His Word works through us as we preach that beautiful gospel message to you. Repentance, forgiveness, as we baptize and feed you with His Word and provide you with the Lord's Supper that assures you of His love and forgiveness and salvation. And as I said, he is with you right now. And he is present in whatever church is preaching and teaching God's word in its truth and purity throughout the world. So he's not just with you here today, but he's with those in China. He's with those in India. He's with those in Europe or Africa or South America, wherever. And his promise to you, to everyone, is I will always be with you throughout your life here on this earth and forever in heaven. Now, we see here the disciples had asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? They were under the understanding that he was going to make Israel into that great and mighty nation, as in the days of David and Solomon. No. He certainly came to restore his kingdom, meaning that through the preaching of the gospel, he lives in you, and he leads you to repent, and he forgives you of your sins. That's what it means by the kingdom of God. And that's how his kingdom would grow, through the preaching and teaching of the gospel. So you see, even though he is in heaven, he's at the same time right next to you. He comes to you with power and has created faith in your heart to believe in Him. And it is He who continues to lead you to recognize your sins, to repent of them, and who forgives you. And be assured, and to assure you that you are His children, destined to be with Him in heaven forever and ever. So, Every time you open your Bibles, your catechism, your meditations, and you read them, he's there with power to bless you and to strengthen your faith in him. And through the means of grace, baptism, 
the word, the communion, he tells you. He loves you. That he hasn't loved you. That he forgives you of your sins. And as I said, this is how his spiritual kingdom grows. This is how we grow in our faith. So even though you may think that he is a million miles away, he's right here with you with every Christian in this world. That's why his ascension is so important. So that he wasn't concentrated there just in the kingdom of Israel. But so that he could work in the hearts of every person in this world at the same time. And now, he gives all of you the work of proclaiming the gospel and sharing it with as many people as you possibly can. And when you do, he's there with you to help you to share it the best you possibly can. And if the Spirit, and if a person, I should say, is, is led by the Spirit to listen to you, and the Spirit creates faith in the, in the heart of that person, then give all glory to Jesus for saving another soul. But if that person rejects you, and what you tell them about Jesus, keep in mind, they're not necessarily rejecting you as a person. But as Jesus says, they are rejecting me. But at the same time, don't go away disappointed. Because who knows? Maybe down the road, what you told them about Jesus may take root later on. The Spirit doesn't just bring people to faith when they're baptized as little children. The Spirit can bring people to faith at any time, at any age. And who knows? Maybe after you've gone home to heaven, maybe that person will come to believe and trust in Jesus. And you will get to see that person in heaven someday. And so remember that this same Jesus who has gone home to heaven is still with us. Don't be trembling that he's not with us. He is. And in the end, he will take us home. So when you see a picture of Jesus, and right away you think he's ascending, look at it as descending as well. And always with you, with his power, taking care of you, blessing you, watching over you, providing, <coughs> protecting, and keeping you in the one true faith. Now, and throughout eternity. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. And let us arise, please, as we now boldly, confidently confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, the light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became holy human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He has 
ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. If we believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated, and at this time we will now receive our gifts of love. Our good, gracious, and merciful. Receive her into your family 
through the sacrament of holy baptism which you have, and protect her now from every danger of body and soul, and give Corey and Jenny the love, wisdom, and means to care for Annie that you have entrusted to them. We ask this in the name of Jesus, the friend of children. Compassionate Father, in your mercy, you transform even sickness and disease into a blessing for your children. With this confidence, we commit all who are sick or suffering in your tender care. And we pray especially uh, for Mary and for Diane. Provide healing and relief from their surgery according to your infinite wisdom and boundless mercy. Grant them patient endurance if their suffering must linger, and help them find true spiritual strength through Jesus and his cross during this time of uh, physical weakness and recovery. By the work of the Holy Spirit, teach them to trust in your forgiveness, grace, and love. In Jesus' name. And we pray for our communicants. Lord Jesus Christ, we lift up our hearts with thanksgiving and praise. Through the blood of your covenant, you have made us worthy to receive your Holy Spirit. You join us with believers throughout the world and throughout the ages by your body given for us. And in this sacrament, time and eternity meet as we celebrate a foretaste of the feast, now enjoyed by all who are in heavenly glory. And as we receive your true body and blood, we rejoice in our salvation through you, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit, our one God, now and forever. And in whose name we also pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you.
provided in the world, that the eyes which have seen the coming of your Son may long for his coming again, and that all who have received in his true body and blood the pledge of your forgiveness may be restored to live anew in holy life through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Thank you. 